After One Piece was a big surprise earlier in the year, we're talking a brand new series on Netflix based on the popular manga and anime. Let's talk about it. What's up, Netflix fans? Welcome back to the channel. Yu Yu Hakusho is on the platform now. I've seen all five episodes. I think that's a great amount of episodes to binge. We're going to talk about it, but I need to know your thoughts. If you are a fan of the anime or a fan of the manga, I'm going into this blind. I don't know anything about the characters, although I did go back and watch the trailer for the anime. It looks really good. So a delinquent teenager is killed and gets resurrected to serve as an investigator of the supernatural. What an awesome premise. This is rated TV 14. Nothing too bad. Violence, obviously, but more in the supernatural realm. A little bit of cursing. But uh, overall, this was really interesting. And I was, I was kind of sucked in in the first episode. You have our main character. He's kind of a loner. A drifter. I'm a drifter. Just blow into town. Gets annoyed by the students and teachers, gets into fights, but one day, all of a sudden, he dies, and that sequence was very eerie, but there is a reason why his life was taken that kind of sparks a lot of this that inevitably happens. But he meets this very odd and quirky character, and at first, you don't really know what she is. What is she? You see, someone shows up and proclaims to be his guide to the spirit world, but the spirit world is not ready to receive him because, and she tells him in the beginning, no one expected you to do what you did to die. And I guess I won't spoil the act that he does, even though I think it's in one of the trailers, but it was really interesting. And it got this show started off on a great note. Now, again, I'm not familiar with the original story, so I don't know how it was handled. I would say my big complaint off the bat with these five episodes is the fact that it's only five episodes, and it feels as if, or it felt as if they were squeezing a lot of characters, character development, you know, montages here and there into these five episodes. So I looked it up, and from what I have read, this spans like 50-ish episodes of the original show. So you're taking all of that time where you're building characters and I assume delivering a great product and you're squeezing it into five 45 to 50 minute long episodes. And that's where the disconnect really started with me because while it starts off on a great note, they're moving very quickly after episode one and there's a lot of information to keep up with. But there is a question posed to him in that first episode. Will you become a spirit detective and find all of these demons trying to enter our world if he says yes then there's a chance he could come back to earth so that's an intriguing probability and that connection that he has to someone remaining in our world she's not dead hasn't died yet that kind of pushes him and guides him through because again at the beginning of the show he's a loner he feels like an outcast in a way but he's just sick and tired of the world around him well that's solved because he dies boy that escalated quickly. Just also a really big hole in the ground, <laughs> these insect things that we see at the beginning, and they will possess people along the way, and it almost turns them into these zombie-like creatures. And so that made for some really interesting fight scenes. A lot of the action sequences in this show are CGI-filled, and then some of them... It almost looks a little too cheesy, even though it's working and you're really entertained along the way. There is this this cheapness to a few of these moments, but the majority of the fight scenes, and I would say even though the CGI doesn't look the best at times, it still works. There's this quirkiness to it that was super entertaining. So the action sequences, which is what I was really looking forward to from the trailer, they worked extremely well. And being the spirit detective and having to do all of the things that he does, I would say starting around the end of episode two into episode three, uh, and I would say episode three is probably my favorite of the entire season just because it's so entertaining and action-packed. And this is a very action-packed season of television. Like I said, five episodes. That's not a lot, so it makes for a very simple binge, and in its own way, it's a simple story, so it's not a ton to keep up with in terms of being confused. They just shoehorn a lot in here, and we are moving so fast at times to where it just feels like it's rushed, and after looking up how many episodes it's covering, I could see why that's the case, just because there's a lot of ground that they were able to cover in the animation, and by the way, I, I really want to see the Is it worth it? Is watching the anime worth it? Because I've heard good things, but I want to know from the fans themselves. 
should I check it out? Another thing I'll say, there's some pretty good comedy in here. It's not like laugh out loud, edge of your seat, like, oh my God, it's the funniest thing I've ever seen, but some nice comedic moments between the characters when he's first figuring out the, the world between worlds and how he's going back and forth. There's some very quirky elements with that. A guy that realized that he died and, and his life or his spirit life is changed forever. It's not really a life, but it kind of is. And again, this is all based around a very serious sacrifice that he makes, and that makes the importance of what he's doing as crazy and wacky as it gets, and these zombie-like creatures that he's fighting, and then the creatures that he's fighting, it gets insane. Very over the top. It definitely feels like some various animes that I've seen, so it kind of captures it in that way, but again, I don't know if it captures the original manga, the original anime, I don't know, uh, but there is a seriousness to why he's doing what he's doing that adds a little bit of levity to those moments that may go over the top that was nice, but the way it moves through everything, and that's my biggest question for you all is, as fans of the show, or if you are a newcomer, did you have the same issue that I had to where it just moves too quickly? Because it does. And because of that, it feels condensed. It feels as if there are opportunities that may have been there in an eight episode series or a 50 episode series like the anime, uh, but opportunities there that uh, it either squandered or didn't dive or delve into the characters. I needed more growth from that. Now, our main couple of characters, very entertaining. The villainous presence that we get, you can feel it all throughout. And that over the top nature does serve, I guess, the pacing and the way that the show feels and those comedic beats, like I said. So this is an entertaining show. I'm taking nothing away from the entertainment value. I needed a bit more from the story itself. I'm curious if I will get that elsewhere, but I am up for more because I think there are some mistakes here that they can fix in the future. And again, if you're looking for entertainment, you're definitely going to get it. Before I give you my score, come back to this channel. We're talking Reacher Season 2 tomorrow, and there's a new movie called Chicken Run. Dawn of the Nuggets. Nugget. Nugget. And if you want to drop a like on this video, that'd be helpful. There's an authenticity to these characters and a weight to the sacrifice that we see in the beginning. It eventually rushes through what could have been a more impactful story, but there is more than enough action to suffice, or at least there will be for many people. But again, this is one that I'm, I just need to know what the fans of this story think, and I need some recommendations. Is it worth going and reading the manga? Is it worth going and watching? Uh, that crazy, fantastical anime. Again, that trailer looked incredible. Thank you guys again for watching. Come back tomorrow. A lot happening on this channel.